Hi friends, it's Miss Tina and I'm back with another video. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Friday. I'm so glad to be with you guys again. And if you haven't subscribed, come on in and join the family. We'll be so glad to have you. I'm here every week just for you. And if you're ready, are you tucked in? Great, I'm tucked in too. Let's get into today's story. Today's story is the year we learned to fly it's written by Jacqueline Woodson and it's illustrated by Rafael Lopez let's get into it that was the spring when the rain seemed like it would never stop and the thunder boomed so hard we weren't allowed to go outside are beautiful pictures use those beautiful and brilliant minds of yours my grandmother said lift your arms close your eyes take a deep breath and believe in a thing somebody somewhere at some point was just as bored as you are how many of us say that we're bored all the time I hear that all the time I'm bored I'm bored I'm bored So my brother and I closed our eyes and for a few minutes that first day, we weren't stuck in our apartment anymore. We were flying over the city we'd known our whole lives, but it was suddenly different, exploding with every kind of flower we ever dreamed of growing. Look at all of the beautiful flowers. That was the summer we learned to fly. When my brother and I couldn't stop fussing with each other over whose turn it was to wash the windows, to feed the dog, to clean the kitchen. We fought and frowned and made silent promises to never speak to each other ever again. Look at her face. My grandmother said, lift your arms, close your eyes, take a deep breath. And stop being so mean about everything. Somebody, somewhere, at some point, was just as mad as you are now. So we did. And as the soft wind took us out over the city and past the windows of kids who hadn't yet learned to fly, my brother and I reached for each other's hand, flying and diving and laughing and leaving all of our mad far behind us. That was the autumn our rooms felt too big and lonely with only us in them and the darkness coming on so fast. But while we hugged ourselves against the too quiet of it all, we remembered that we didn't have to be stuck anywhere anymore. My grandmother had learned to fly from the people who came before. They were aunts and uncles and cousins who were brought here on huge ships, their wrists and ankles cuffed in iron. But my grandmother said, nobody can ever cuff your beautiful and brilliant mind. So 
So our people learned to fly, she said. They dreamed the thing and made it happen. Closed their eyes and flew away home. Lift your arms, my grandmother said. Close your eyes. And remember, somebody, somewhere, at some point, had to figure out they could fly. That was the winter we moved away from the building and the block and the friends we've always known. To a street where the kids looked at us funny and didn't even answer when we asked them if they wanted to play. It's okay, I said to my brother. Somebody, somewhere, at some point, had to figure out they were ready for any new thing coming their way. Somebody did. So like the people who came before us, we lifted our arms even higher, closed our eyes even tighter, breathed in even deeper, and flew away, we'd always known how to, free as the aunties and uncles and cousins who'd come before us, free as our own beautiful and brilliant minds. For a long time, the kids on the ground watched us. Then one by one, they lifted their arms. One by one, they learned to fly. The first time I read The People Could Fly, American Black Folk Tales, this is from our author, by the brilliant Virginia Hamilton, I realized that through her beautiful story, I was learning to fly. Not with wings, but with words. Isn't that beautiful? Her book is a story of how enslaved people escape their hard lives by lifting and flying away home. And every page is anointed with the illustrious paintings of Leo and Diane Dillon. As a kid, I always wondered how people were able to survive through the horrors of enslavement, but they did. And they passed down their stories and their fables and their memories to the young people coming along after them. And these, story gave, these stories gave us wings. Virginia Hamilton gave me and so many other writers storytelling wings. And with these wings, I have been able to fly past even the hardest of times into the world of stories. That's why I like reading so much, because we can go to a whole nother place. Sometimes the first step towards change is closing our eyes, taking a breath, and imagining a different way. And that's written by Jacqueline Woodson, who's the author of this book. And that is the end of our stories, friends. The year we learned to fly. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day, and I'll see you next week. Bye.